Welcome to this demonstration of the Feropta interface for the Thomson test chart. Exact details of how to set up your hardware to use the Feropta interface are available in another video. But we'll assume that you have two screens, a dual screen set up with your PC and you have a screen in front of you and one on the wall. The one on the wall showing the test chart and the one in front of you showing the screen that you're now looking at, the floating window within the Thomson test chart. If you have the Feropta module installed, you'll find in your floating window a button at the bottom of the screen labeled Feropta. And if you click on that, it will load the Feropta interface. So with the Feropta interface, you still have complete control over your test chart so you can do all the normal things you would normally do with the test chart uh, using either the buttons at the top here or you can continue using the remote control if that's your preference. You've also got a thumbnail of what is being displayed on the test chart and so that will show you exactly what you're looking at without having to turn around and uh, you can also point at letters and do all sorts of other things using the thumbnail here. So you have complete control over your test chart. But if we now turn our attention to the Feropta interface, what we've tried to do here is to ease the transition from a trial frame to a Feropta. So you'll see we have at the top of the screen a visualization which even looks a bit like a trial frame. So you can never be any, in any doubt about the lenses that are currently in place in the Feropta. So in this demonstration, I'm just going to show you the basic functions of the Feropta control. In um, other videos, I'm going to show you some of the more advanced features. So in terms of the basic functions, if you simply want to change the right sphere, then all you have to do is select right sphere here, and then you use the mouse wheel to dial up the lens that you want. And you can see as I do that, the visualization actually looks like a trial frame. It even goes red when the spheres go positive. Likewise for the cell, you just select cell and dial up the lens you want and likewise with the axis. And uh, what you'll find with this mouse interface is it's nice and tactile so it will click as you go around an 025 steps, but it will also, if you make a big change, it will wait until you stop moving the mouse wheel and then move the Feropta wheel uh, in one small movement. So uh, this is a, a really nice slick way of changing the lenses. If you want to change both the right and the left eye at the same time, you simply click in the middle and you'll see that both the right and the left spheres are now selected and if I use the mouse wheel, they will both change simultaneously. And the same applies to both cell and axis. If you want to put up a near ad, you simply click on uh, the near ad down here. This will automatically change the PD or the centration distance of the Feropta to the near PD. And it will highlight the ads here. And then you can just dial up the ad in the normal way. By default, it will select both eyes for an equal ad, but if you want an unequal ad, you just click on one side and then you can dial in individual ads for each eye. To return to distance mode, you just click any of these up here and uh, they'll become highlighted and the Feropta will then go back into distance mode. So it will change the CD back to the distance PD. It will uh, get rid of the convergence of the two eyepieces and it will also turn the PD LED on and off to illuminate your near text. So if we wanted to just compare a plus or minus 025 on this sphere value, which is something that I guess we want to do fairly frequently, of course you could just dial up a 125 and a, minus o, a plus 075, uh, but that's a little bit cumbersome. So a popular feature that we have built in is this flipper lens equivalent here. So if you simply want to add a plus or minus 025 to the plus one here, you simply click on plus 025 
and minus 025. So it's not actually changing this value here, but it is adding a plus or minus 025 to whatever you've got in here. If you want to do plus or minus 050, you can do that, or plus or minus 1, you can do that. If you want to do this binocularly, you just click on Binoc here, and then if you click on plus or minus 050, it will add plus or minus 050 to each eye. So that's a really useful feature for, for doing confirmation of sphere power. Uh, at the top here, we've got a, a variety of options, the commonly used options. So uh, you can put up a ret lens in front of each eye. You can actually select the power of this uh, ret lens from the options and the program setup under the Feropter tab. Uh, if you want to simply blur one eye, fog one eye, fog the left eye, you uh, select monocular first, then fog left eye. There we are and fog the right eye. If you want to occlude one eye, you can either click on cover left eye uh, and cover right eye, or you can actually just click on the eye itself and that has the same effect. You've also got pinholes, right and left, and uh, then you've got prisms here as the last option. So if I select prisms, it will put up two additional boxes uh, at the bottom here. We figured that it probably wasn't a good idea to be ramping up prisms while the patient is looking through the phoropter. So this allows you to actually dial up the prisms that you want to put in. So let's just put in one and a half prism diopters base in. Uh, but this hasn't actually been put into the phoropter yet. To do that, you have to click on incorporate. And then both of these prisms are put in at the same time. And likewise, you can take them out at the same time by clicking on that again. By default, um, these will be selected individually, but if you simply want to um, increase the base in prism equally in each eye, for example, if you click on Monoc, it will change to Binoc. If I now change the uh, rotate the mouse wheel, it will add the same amount of base in prism to each eye. And the same would apply for vertical prisms, but of course with vertical prisms, they would be base up and base down. But do remember, that the prisms will not be incorporated uh, unless you've got that selected and that will leave you in no doubt that you've got the lenses, the, the prisms in. To get rid of the prism boxes, we just click there. The supplementary lenses here at the top are fairly self-explanatory. So you've got red-green filters, you've got polarized lenses in both orientations, you've got a Maddox rod horizontal, and Maddox rod vertical. And this is a, a vertical prism, uh, six prism diopters vertically, which can be used to uh, evoke diplopia for binocular balancing. Over here, you've got um, the LEDs, so you can illuminate the LEDs at the back of the phoropter when you're measuring PD. Uh, these are the alignment crosses. I'll deal with those in a moment when I cover the PD adjustment. Near LED, manually turns on and off the LED at the front of the phoropter, which is used to illuminate the reading card. By default, the axis here changes in five degree steps as you rotate the mouse wheel. If you've got a high cell, you can put them on one degree steps, and then uh, this will change in one degree steps. We'll put it on back on five degrees. To change the uh, centration distance of the phoropter, then you just click here and uh, you'll find that it will automatically put in place an alignment cross in front of each eye and will also turn on the LED at the back of the phoropter to illuminate the eyes. So you can then look through the phoropter and align the alignment crosses with the center of the pupil as you change the centration distance here. To get rid of that, you just click on anywhere else. So I'll click on sphere here. It will then get rid of the alignment crosses and get rid of the, or turn the LEDs at the back of the phoropter off again. So the one remaining thing to show you is the cross cell. So to do a cross cell test, you just select cross cell. And uh, this will put up a visualization, which will look quite familiar. 
Um, the black, by the way, uh, represents minus and the red represents plus. So to, um, to change from power to axis mode, you just click there. And to spin the cross sill, uh, you simply click on this button here and you'll see from the visualization what is happening. Now with the top conferopter, uh, it has a very uh, has a red rim in one direction and a green rim in the other direction. So the patient does actually see a very slight red tinge and a green tinge while you're doing this test. So you can simply say, is it clearer with green or red? And of course, we're in axis mode at the moment. You could then just manually look at the plus and minus axis here and adjust the sill accordingly. To make things a little easier, you can just use the red and green buttons here. So if I spin the cross sill and say, is it clearer with the green or the red? If the patient says red, I just click on the red and the sill will then move in the right direction. If they say green, it will move in the opposite direction. And the same applies if you're in power mode. You can say, is it clearer with lens with the green, the red or the green? If they say the green, it will then decrease the sill power. And if they say red, it will increase the sill power. So that just makes the process slightly easier. You've got a plus and minus 025 cross sill, plus and minus 050, and also an auto cross sill, which is the simultaneous view cross sill. So to get rid of the cross sill, you simply click on cross sill there and uh, it will remove it. The cross sill will be shown in whichever eye is currently selected. So if I select the left eye and now do cross sill, it will automatically occlude the right eye and uh, put the cross sill in front of the left eye. So that's a very quick demonstration of how the Feropter interface within the Thompson test chart works. In other videos, I'll show you how to use the scratch pad to import a prescription from your patient management system and also how to use the program interface here.